And all right. Hello, Hacksters. Welcome to Throwback Thursday. It is late in the evening, and I'm coming at you with something that is a little bit of a more interesting subject than usual. Well, first up, um, let's talk about recycling. I'm going to talk about recycling plastic yourself and also recycling um, old things into new things. So first up though, um, I've been playing around with DIY recycling. Uh, a while ago in June, I did a video about how to actually recycle PLA filament, which what your options are, because it turns out that actually, although it says that it's biodegradable and compostable and stuff, it turns out that you have to have higher temperatures in order to uh, do that than most compost heaps provide. And I go into what your actual options are, unless you have like an industrial strength compost pile, and uh, there's tons of interesting stuff uh, to go into there, and I highly recommend checking that out. It is from the end of June 2019. And since then, uh, I got into this idea that, you know, not only could I recycle PLA from 3D printing, like support material and old failed prints and stuff, but also uh, there's PLA, uh, all these compostable, uh, biodegradable products uh, have their little identifiers on the bottom, and this one says 7PLA, which means that it's also made of polylactic acid, and you can also treat it the same way, presumably. I haven't yet tried it, but I'm on my way. I've finally gathered all of the resources. I've gathered some, also, uh, plastic bottles for milk and yogurt drinks and things, which often are made out of HDPE, which is another type of plastic that's very easy to recycle yourself. It's called polyethylene, and HDPE is uh, high-density polyethylene, and most soft plastic bags are low-density polyethylene, and both of these can be recycled uh, sometimes together into, for example, robot parts. Um, I found this old tutorial from my friend Star Simpson talking about how to turn plastic bags into robot wheels, which is basically exactly what I wanted to do, um, except that she uses this method that I've seen around and seems rather... It doesn't seem like what I want because it turns... Uh, it uses this method of melting the plastic in oil in a pan on the stove, which requires A, being in a stove environment, which mine doesn't have great ventilation to the outside, and B, uh, the oil sort of gets mixed in with the plastic, and so especially if you're going to be milling it or machining it or anything like that, then it's gonna be weeping oil over the life of the part, which, as she mentions, if you are making, for example, bearings or something that wants to be lubricated, you could use motor oil or something instead, and then it would actually self-lubricate a bit over time. But most of what I want to do is like enclosures for robots and uh, wearable things. <laughs> There's going to be some cool stuff with that. And so I don't want it to be leaking oil everywhere. Uh, so I'm not going to use this method, but it is really cool if you want to mess around with that. I recommend checking it out. She's got this cool method with like a wine bottle and a salsa container that uh, lets you make robot wheels out of it. Very neat. Uh, there's another method, though, which uses heating it up in, like, a toaster oven, for example. And this person, um, Manuel Mask, goes into how to do that. And that involves another method with sort of, uh, first up, using a toaster oven. And secondly, um, clamping your melted plastic into a box to create a block that you can then mill or turn on a lathe or whatever. And they go into a couple of different options for, for example, marbling versus doing like a camo effect and uh, what those look like. Very cool. Uh, he mentions this precious plastic guide, which is on GitHub, which talks about all the different melting points of different types of plastic. So the two that I've been talking about are PE, polyethylene, this white column here, and PLA, the yellow column here, the polylactic acid, which is what a lot of people use for filament. Uh, in order to extrude your own filament, you need a whole uh, 
specialized device for that and I don't feel like doing that. I'd rather just look into other ways like molding the plastic, like squeezing it into a mold instead of just like a block uh, and making parts directly like that and uh, or maybe milling it on the bantam mill, which could be really cool too, depending on the size of what I'm trying to make. And there's a bunch of people talking about this on YouTube as well, if you learn through videos instead. Uh, and I'm going to be making videos of my progress as I go through this. So far what I've done is gathered all the materials and tonight I want to actually use them. Um, I've cut up some bottles with these heavy duty tin snips that I got. They have an angled tip so that I can sort of get in there pretty easily. And um, you can, if you want it to be more efficient, you can get like a shredder or something, but I'm just doing this sort of for funsies uh, to try it out. And I, these are going to be useful for a lot of other things too. But I've got, you know, from a couple of those bottles, I've got a decent amount of HDP chips already. Classic Spark Fun. Actually, this is not a classic Spark Fun box. This is a new Spark Fun box. Notice how shiny it is and how it's got the new stuff on it. Mixed feelings. <laughs> uh, no, I love it. Um, not going to complain. Not going to complain. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of the bottles are made out of this more, like, this is another, this is the same stuff. They're both HDPE, um, but this one is the more typical, like, uh, milk bottle style that you would see. See how this one is more opaque and this one is more translucent? Yeah, uh, I'm gonna try melting them separately. But I've got all these things that I would like to throw in, like different colored powders and stuff, like gold powder for shimmer and things. So I'll be keeping people updated on that. Uh, and then I have one other thing that I would like to share. This is a very special folder. So uh, when I was a young child, uh, I was adopted. And uh, my bio father, who was not a great person, uh, passed away earlier this year. And this is the only thing that I wanted. And it, uh, we thought that it was just lost. No one could find it, but my sibling found it um, maybe a month ago and ended up giving it to me. And what it is, is that uh, he was the first person who showed me how to solder when I was very young and uh, called it soldering because this was Britain. <laughs> and uh, he was someone who made his own speakers and sound systems professionally. So this is something that's incredibly special to me uh, because he first started teaching me about amplifiers and uh, tank circuits and things like that once. We had like one or two conversations about it ever while I was a grown up. Uh, but this is, it was from this folder, and finally it's been found. And naturally I have a lot of mixed feelings about that whole situation, but I strongly believe that a good way to deal with feelings is to turn them into something new. And that way, no matter how you feel, um, you get something beautiful out of it. So what I want to do is, I don't understand all of these things, but I want to show them to you because they're beautiful. And I'm thinking that I would like to turn some of these into uh, circuits, PCBs that people can use. I'm gonna refocus this a little bit. Because I don't know if he came up with all of this himself or if he just compiled a bunch of notes from different places, but I don't think that they should just be lost. Um, as far as I can tell, these are about uh, different types of FETs, field effect transistors. Um, whether they have a common collector, a common emitter. All these different notes on these things. I think it'll be cool for you all to look at. 
that noise rises steeply below one... I'm not sure what unit that is. One kilohertz. Duh. Transconductance. What even is tran transconductance? I've never heard that. FET's best represented by Y parameters in matrix terminology. I don't know what that means either, but I'm I'm going to learn. This is something that I would like to study and uh, and figure out what all this stuff means. I think it has to do with building basically really specific types of audio sound systems and what the different benefits and drawbacks of each component are. Bass and treble responses. Wow. Different types of amplifier circuits. And one page in particular I would like to show, which is specifically the page that I would focus on. Uh, I'm going to see if there's anyone talking for a second. Hmm. Not sure what that was referring to, but yeah. Um, way in the back here is the one page that I really remember us talking about, and that is this section, which is labeled music. And on this page, you can see a chromatic organ with a resistor ladder, which looks actually pretty simple. Uh, a resistor ladder is what the original stylophone was based on, and I think this could be an, uh, just a really cool project to build. Um, I'm decent with keyboards, and uh, this could be really something to explore. Then there's a symbol which is apparently a white noise hit with uh, really a fast attack and a slow decay. We have a tremolo. First FET used as phase shift oscillator controlling the ground voltage or something? Uh, or the gate voltage of the second FET and thus its resistance as half of voltage divider. Uh, voltage divider, also known as a potentiometer. Uh, and then we have a sound effects unit, drums, etc. With notation for a drum, a tom tom, bongo, and blocks. Pressing the switch produces one beat. Use some type of preamp, I think. The resistance in about 5k and feed to any amp. And then we have drum effects over here. VR adjust till just quiescent when ringing occurs for circa 30 cycles when activated. I'm not sure what exactly that means. <laughs> But I'll figure it out. Anyway, uh, here we have a chromatic organ and we have a bunch of drums. And we have a tremolo circuit, which I could put on the organ. And I think this is a, a pretty good start for a couple of uh, music devices that I could turn into PCBs. So I'm looking forward to doing this and sharing it with you all. And since it's Throwback Thursday, I figured it was a good time to share. Then we get back into like oscillators and things. I'm not sure what AF stands for. AF oscillator. We've got a Schmidt trigger, we've got a buffer, differential amplifier. 
Um, yeah. AF oscillator. Hmm. hmm. I will look it up. There's lots to look up in here. And uh, I'm looking forward to sharing. For now, I'm going to put this away so that nothing untoward happens to it. Obviously, i got to be kind of careful with it. Uh, but yeah, I look forward to sharing more of this soon. This has been your late night edition of Throwback Thursday. A little bit more interesting than usual, I think. And uh, yeah, we'll be back tomorrow. Have an awesome night.